You have one more chance this season to hear the Portland Youth Philharmonic here at the Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall. That's on May 4th. Another, this one's a Sunday afternoon, and we'll be centering the program around the amazing First Symphony of American composer Samuel Barber, written in 1936. Coincidentally, the same year as the symphony we're about to play, the symphony number no. four of Dmitry Shostakovich. Um, there's a lot I could say about it, and I will try to be brief because the symphony is everything but brief. Uh, as opposed to Barber's 18-minute symphony, this symphony lasts well over an hour. And you can see, most of you who can see the whole stage, the vast array of forces required to perform this symphony, one of the reasons that it is so rarely heard in concert. The symphony is a product of a time in Shostakovich's life when he seemed to have everything going for him. When he graduated from the, from the St. Petersburg Conservatory, his first symphony, his graduation piece, was taken up by major conductors all over the world and played uh, widely. It's a wonderful symphony, still played uh, regularly today. He became very involved in Russian theater, both cinema uh, and opera, as well as ballet. His greatest success was an opera being performed at the time of the composing of the symphony called Lady Macbeth of Mitsensk District, an opera so uh, wildly popular with Soviet audiences that it was playing in three theaters simultaneously in both Moscow and St. Petersburg. Uh, the subject was Russian and it was a satire of Russian life that uh, people found very appealing, uh, but it was graphic, not just the stage action but the music as well, and in its early Western performances it was referred to parts of it by a reviewer as pornophony. Uh, it it uh, is shocking to see even today parts of it and to hear uh, some of the loud squealing noises from the pit uh, were enough to shake people up, and it certainly did that when Joseph Stalin came to see a performance of it. Uh, immediately thereafter, uh, Shostakovich and his opera were denounced. Uh, his opera was banned not to be played again in the Soviet Union for 30 years, and at that moment, two movements of this breakthrough symphony that he was composing, uh, both in length and orchestration of breakthrough, uh, were completed. But Shostakovich went ahead and completed it and uh, put it into rehearsals, but a delegation of, uh, shall we say, government officials visited the Leningrad Philharmonic and Shostakovich decided to withdraw the symphony and uh, it was not premiered until 1961. The symphony uh, is a reflection of the society at that time in the Soviet Union. Uh, Stalin, uh, at about that time, had completed his efforts to uh, kill all of the uh, leaders who had actually done the revolution who were still alive, and to become not only the leader of the government, but sort of a godlike figure to the Soviet people. What he wanted for the Soviet Union was it for it to go from being a very primitive uh, agrarian society to a modern uh, factories and uh, war-making machine, which it, of course, as we all know, became. Uh, but it was uh, an upheaval that shook the people to their core and turned ordinary citizens into informants. And uh, Shostakovich soon realized that he couldn't trust anyone and had no one to talk to and was very much alone. And some of the friends he did have were, as they say, disappearing in the middle of the night after a knock on the door. Shostakovich even kept a suitcase packed for the occasion. The symphony is grand in every way. It has uh, the widest spectrum of uh, dynamics and moods that one can imagine and it ends after a huge cataclysm, softly and utterly defeated and, in fact, haunted. Uh, to point out just a few of the uh, incredible moments along the way, the uh, remarkable fugato that breaks out in the middle of the first movement, started by the first violins and rushing around the string section of the orchestra, and then when the winds, brass, and percussion join, builds to a shattering climax. In the end of the second movement, the main theme of the second movement is played in first violins over a rather haunted ticking percussion effect and uh, this effect was uh, brought back by Shostakovich at the end of his last symphony, the 15th. And uh, in the third movement, sort of going away from the development, he goes through a series of seemingly unrelated themes which uh, has been suggested are a reflection of Soviet street scenes, uh, whether they're Boy Scouts marching or other things, and then finally a huge climax and then it dies away quietly. So uh, not heard in this state since 1985. We're very pleased to bring this uh, rather remarkable 
and uh, monumental symphony, which has also been a remarkable and monumental challenge for these young musicians uh, who are from the Portland Youth Philharmonic and also uh, more than a few from the Portland Youth Conservatory Orchestra who are filling in on extra parts tonight. <laughs> 